Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Let's make something oh so elegant, oh so useful for the craft room, and oh so simple to make. Y'all stay tuned. So guys, recently I showed you this box that is designed to hold 12 by 6 papers or anything that you might want to use in your craft room or in your home for storage. And this is a perfect storage chest. Not only is it perfect, but it's gorgeous and it is so simple to make. Gone are the days of when we're cutting out those strips and joining corners with strips of paper, yada yada, all of that. None of that is needed to make this box and you're going to have something that is super sturdy, super functional, and super easy to make. On this one, I put feet, but on the one that we're making today, I won't be putting feet so that we can stack these. So guys, let's get started. All right, guys, so what you see right here is all that we're going to need to make a fully functional box that will hold our six by six paper pads or whatever else you might want to put in them. And like I said, I am not claiming that I invented the box. What I'm saying is that I'm showing you guys a simpler process than the standard process of cutting out um, one by six or two by six or two by eight strips of paper and then joining it to connect the box. So please don't come with the comments of you didn't invent foam board or you didn't invent the box. That is never what I've claimed. What I'm saying is I'm showing a simpler process. So here is what we're going to need. I have two sheets of rolled paper. My rolled paper measures 20 by 28. If you are going to use 12 by 12 papers for this, you are going to need approximately 11 sheets of 12 by 12 paper to be able to make this box in the way that I am making it. And I'm making mine with rolled paper because that gives me the seamless, most professional look um, that I like. Now you can do this with your 12 by 12 papers, but you will have some seams showing. And if that is okay with you, then by all means, use those papers to make your box. I've seen in the comments that drawer liner paper is being used, contact paper, um, high-end wrapping papers, not necessarily the Italian wrapping papers, but higher-end wrapping papers, the butcher block paper, and then decorate it. That's being used as well. So there are a whole bunch of different ways that you can get the seamless look and then go back and decorate using your 12 by 12s. But I am using rolled paper for this project. Then I have two pieces of foam board that measure six and three eighths by seven. I have a piece that measures six and three eighths by 12. I have a piece that measures six and seven eighths by 12. I have a piece that measures six and a half by 13. And two pieces that measure 13 by seven and a half. Okay guys, so to start our project, I am going to use one sheet of my rolled paper and it measures 20 by 28. So that means that for this portion of the project, if you're using 12 by 12 sheets, you will need at least three 12 by 12 sheets to be able to um, do this complete layout. So we're going to start with our 13 by seven and a half inch cover piece and I am going to place that down just like this. And then I'll have my six and a half by 13 inch spine in order to make sure that I have got my placement proper. I am going to just take a piece of the foam board, lay it down and get my spine piece in place. And then I can pull this piece out and you need to make sure that you do that so that you will have the appropriate spacing between your boards. And then I'll do the same thing with this piece. So this is my final 13 by seven and a half inch piece. I am just going to butt it up against the foam board and get it placed down. I'll use my finger blade to trim off some of this excess. And I'll flip it over 
and just go over this with my bone folder to make sure that my tape is nice and stuck to the paper. Okay, so now what I'll do is I am simply going to stand this up and fold this over on all ends of the paper. Okay, so now that I have my ends folded over, I'm simply going to come back and miter cut my edges. And I'll also go ahead and lay down my tape on the inside here so that you guys don't have to watch the repetitive step of me placing tape, placing tape, placing tape. I'll be right back. All right guys, so I have my tape down over the entire board and all we need to do at this point is just go ahead, fold over our edges, make sure that you run your finger along the top to make sure that all your paper is laying down flat. And then I will use my bone folder to just smooth that out. And I'm going to repeat this process on the remaining three sides. All right guys, so once we have our paper folded over, it's time to place down our liner piece. And the liner piece measures um, 12 and 3 quarters by 21 and a half inches. So what I'll be doing is placing glue all around the edges of my liner, and then I'll get it stuck down. Okay, so once I have the tape, all right, so once I have the glue all along the edges of this, I am simply going to try to place it down and get it nice and even, hopefully. Use my bone folder to then come back and work that glue in nice and even. Okay, so once we have it like this, you can see that we've got the shell of our box ready to go. And it really is as simple as that. So I'll set this to the side and we'll make the sides and the front for the box. All right guys, now that our shell is made, we need to go ahead and place down our front pieces. So we will be placing down two six and three eighths by seven inch sides and one 12 and three quarters by seven inch front. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take my front piece and put it down to make sure that I'm getting this right because these dimensions are so close. When we place it down, we are going to place it as close to the edge as possible, but we are going to leave ourselves a base of this because that is what we will anchor it to um, the inside of the box with. So let's go ahead and place this down just like that. So I'll bring in my piece of foam board and butt it against the piece I just laid down so that I can get proper spacing on this. And then I can lay this piece down. So now I can come over here and do the same thing. So I'll just place that down and I'm going to get this stuck down. And now I'll use my finger blade to trim the excess that exists right here and then I'll flare out. So I am just going to come up the side of this, get to the top, and then I'll flare. And then at the bottom, I'll remove that as well. So now I'm going to place tape all over this and I'll be right back. All right guys, so now that I have my tape on here, I am simply going to take this, bring it over, and we will get this stuck down. So I am pulling it very tight just to make sure I've got it all nice and stuck. So now that I have my wrap over complete, I'll just come back and clean up some of the excess paper along the edge, if I have any. Okay, so now that I have it folded over, all I'm going to do is just stand it up so I can create this lip. And then I'm going to do this and do this. And this is what I'll be using to come back and just cut out a tiny little V in between all of my little joints here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some glue and join these together. And get them nice and stuck.
Okay, so once we have this done, we are now going to place glue along our tab here. And this is what we'll use to join this to the bottom. So be generous with your glue. And I'm also going to make sure that I get glue along the bottom of my lip. But just make sure that you're covering your tabs well. So I'm gonna get my hands just a little messy and bend these backwards, just like this. And now I can take this and I am just going to position it wherever I want it to be on the box. And then I'll bring the back up because I definitely need for this to hit the back so that we don't have any gaps. And it looks pretty good to me on that side and it looks pretty good to me on that side. And when that is the case, all I'm going to do is bring in my bone folder and get these tabs nice and stuck. And then once I've got the tabs nice and stuck, I am just going to press down to make sure everything's going to stay. And guys, this box is looking fabulous. All I need to do is take my glue, place it on my little raw edge here, do this on both sides. And I am being very generous with my glue on this foam board. All I need to do is fold over my back. Sorry for hitting the camera there. Fold over the back and just press this backwards just like this to get everything nice and stuck. And we're going to let this set up and dry for us. And then y'all know what? We have a very easy box and we will put just one final piece in it, which will help this box to stay secure, not going anywhere. Gorgeous, gorgeous piece to have in your craft room or even in your home. All right, guys, so my box is done. It's not quite dry, so I am handling it very carefully. But as you can see, it is drying nicely on the sides. Everything is nice and tight. That's how a box should be. And I am going to go ahead and see if I can open this up just like that. And I want to go ahead and place the bottom in. And the bottom measures six and seven eighths by 12. So I have some leftover paper and I am going to take this piece and place it down, try to get it as close to this top part here as I can. All right, so then do a little test fit to, to make sure that it's not going to come undone. And if it's not, then all you need to do is place some glue along the bottom, because this is our anchor piece. Sorry about that squeaking. And then I'll take this piece and I am just going to put it in and drop it in the bottom, press it down. And now my bottom of my box is not going anywhere. So now all I need to do is really let this finish drying and we have got a beautifully completed box. And while it's drying, I am going to go ahead and just decorate the front. Very simple decoration. I am going to put a handle on the front Got these handles at Hobby Lobby. They have all of their hardware on sale this week, the last week of February, 2020. And I am going to place it down right there. We'll let that dry. And once our box is completely dried, we'll come back and take a look at this beautiful, beautiful storage box that we have for our six by six paper pads. So guys, our box is all done. And wasn't that a very easy way of making a very useful and functional box? If you agree that this is a very simplified way of making a box, please leave me a comment below and let me know. But this box is not only simple, but it is a very big box. It is perfect for holding those six by six paper pads that you might have. You can store them this way, you can store them this way, 
however you want to do it. Totally up to you how you want to use this box, but either way, you have got a nice new addition to your craft room storage and to help you get organized. Again, I am going to say it, a very simplified way of making a larger box. Now you don't have to be afraid of making those 12 by 12s or those 10 by 10s because using this process you can crank it out in no time. So guys, I hope that you have liked this project. And if you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join my online crafting family. You guys, have a great day. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.